Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you a really interesting and innovative way to create hair puddings and hair waxes. Now in these particular formulas I am actually using pretty much the same materials both times I'm creating the different products but I end up with very different end results. Now what this means for a small supplier is why you would have to get some very unique materials in for your brand. You would then end up with a semi-soft hair pudding with great hold as well as a full semi-solid wax from getting pretty much the same materials. Now with these formulas they do require hot processing and they do require paddle mixing. So make sure if you don't have the right equipment you get it contract manufactured by someone who does. These are really important elements. So now let me show you how they're made. First let's take an extra close-up of the two products we're going to be making. So this is the pudding. You can see that's squishy, it has quite a, uh, a soft viscosity to it, spreads really well. And then if we compare that with the wax, which is a real hair wax product. Now one of the tricky things you need to do when creating a hair wax is to get the waxiness just right that it is a solid wax product in a tub, but then melts at body temperature to become a very soft, pliable and spreadable product and then of course it sets back to its wax form to hold hair in place. Now the method for both is the same so we're going to start with our water and I'm going to add my preservative at this step so I am making a very natural product today um, if you use another preservative just make sure it is heat tolerant because this particular formula requires quite a bit of heat. Now I'm adding my uh, gum here. Now this is the same styling gum that you saw me use in the gel video. And it's a very unique and proprietary blend of carrageenans and gives exceptional styling and hold power. So I'm using that in this formula. In the wax product I also add some cornstarch. Now the cornstarch you add directly into the water and that just helps give the product that extra wax-like body and matte end result. So now we've slurried our gel. We do need to slurry this one because it does have a big impact on viscosity. And we add that directly to the water. So far you can see cold mixing and so far very easy. Now you can already see that viscosity has increased significantly so we need to create that gel first because it becomes even harder to mix when we start to add the waxes. So we're just going to heat this up now. Now we need to heat this water phase above the melting point of our waxes and just look at the amount of waxes we're using. Now remember this is for the pudding product so one of the differences when we're making the wax is we use a bit more beeswax to make it set even harder but of course we also have that cornstarch which helps make it set harder as well as give a nice mattifying effect. Now I'm using Amulium mellifera here and these are very buttery type beads and this helps us have product that is so pliable and melts at body temperature so we can spread it through the hair easily. I also have another Gattafosse product here, Definisia. And again, this is a really butter-like product, but it has a nice high melting point. So again, gives you that nice pliability when you're running it through the hair. So these help us modify that uh, pliability and temperature consistency of the finished product, while our beeswax gives us a lot of the structure. We add these to our gel. And then we need to melt them 
in the hot gel. Now, it's a great idea to have a knockout fragrance in any hair type product. Uh, and again, if you're making a natural product, you're really best to speak with a fragrance house about providing you with an all natural, naturally derived fragrance. Uh, and they can do that by taking isolates from different essential oils and combining them so that you end up with a natural fragrance that is from different isolates of essential oils. And of course, tell them it needs to go into a hot fill product so that they provide you with a natural fragrance that will tolerate these high temperatures. Adding essential oils to this formula, you could find you get a lot of degradation. I haven't put an antioxidant into this formula because none of the materials I'm using need an antioxidant. Uh, but if you are going to add essential oils, you will need to add antioxidant as well. Now, if you wanted to add any actives to this product, you would need to pick actives that can also handle high temperatures for a long time. In the case of the wax product, you will actually need to uh, pour this off while it's molten, which means it will be at high temperatures for quite a long time. With the pudding product, this is actually soft and pliable enough that if you had a really good piston filler with a nice wide nozzle, you could pack it off the next day or the day after. It will go through a filling machine, but this particular product is a pure wax form when it sets. It does set above 60 degrees. So you do need to use a hot fill process, otherwise you'll get a very ugly looking product in the finished jar. So this is why you need sweeper blades. As you can see, I'm using the sweeper motion to combine the product. If you were to just use a propeller, you would find it would stir in one spot because of the viscosity, and that's not going to give you a nice homogenous product. You'll end up with waxy clumps, and I can't use a homogenizer either because it just wouldn't mix the product properly. And because of the high temperature, I would have to keep it extremely hot to enable the product to mix well with a homogenizer mixer. So paddle stirring is the way to go. So again, if you don't have a paddle stirrer to manufacture this product, make sure you get it contract manufactured by someone who does. So you just need to keep mixing. And again, in a larger vessel, that paddle stirrer is essential. Keep mixing so that all of your waxes melt. Now really important, once you have got it all to melt, you need to keep these sweeper blades going for a bit longer while the product cools. Otherwise you will get a lot of separation and the product will fail. Very, very important that it starts to go below the setting point of some of the waxes while the emulsion is still being mechanically stirred, otherwise it will not be stable. I cannot emphasize this uh, step enough. Even when you think your emulsion has formed, you need to keep those sweeper blades going as the product cools, otherwise it will separate. Now, once all of your waxes have melted, we can now continue the sweeper mixing while it cools and you start to see the viscosity build. This is really, really important. I mentioned it earlier. I'm mentioning it and showing it again now because this is a very, very important step. If you do not adequately stir while these waxes start to cool, your product will separate. If you mix it correctly, you will end up with your beautiful finished product that is very stable. But if you get this part wrong, it will separate. And as you can see, this is again why sweeper blades are a very important manufacturing requirement. Now with the wax product, obviously you can't let it cool to the point where it sets. You do need to pour it off, but stirring at this point is still a very, very important step until you start to see the product trace. How do we know? You can start to see the trace of the sweeper blades. And when you start to see that with the wax, you know you've got good mixing. That's the step you need to get to. Continue your mixing and hold that temperature for at least 10 minutes, depending on the batch size. 
before you start pouring off and that way you'll have good product stability. With the pudding, you can of course keep mixing because its viscosity won't build fully until it's completely cooled and then it is still pumpable and pourable with a nice wide nozzle. You can start to see the product really building its viscosity now. We need to keep stirring. And there you have your beautiful pudding. Just remember the wax needs to be poured off while still molten. The pudding, once we've allowed it to cool enough and there is no further tracing and you can definitely see it's homogenous, you can leave that, pour that off the next day because it will take until the next day to set completely. You could pour it off on the day if you want, it is still pourable on the day, but by the next day it will set to its full pudding form. And there you have it, how to use pretty much the same materials to create two really cool hair products. Do you want to see how they look on the hair? Let's take a look at that now, I've got some willing volunteers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, showing you how to make two very different product types using pretty much the same ingredients uh, and of course that method very crucial and having the right equipment also very very important. If you liked this video please give us a thumbs up, make sure you leave any comments or questions below, make sure you subscribe to find out about all of our videos and let me know if there's a topic you'd like to hear about. Happy formulating!